Hey guys, it is Sarah here. So um, today, as you guys can see, I'm recording with a different camera and I'm using my phone's camera. I'm filming my iPhone right now with a front camera. And I do want to say that this is just a much more relaxed and chill video that I've ever really done. Like, as you guys read by the title, this is going to be like a story. I don't want it to be a story time because it's still something that is kind of affecting me today in a way. Um, but yeah, it's not clickbait. I didn't actually get cancer, but I was really close to. So, um, yeah. But, um, there's two reasons why I'm filming this video. One, because I lost my camera charger, so I can't really use my camera now. I ordered a new charger, but right now I can't use a camera charger because I don't have it, and I can't, you know, record anything with my camera. So, since this was a kind of, like, talking video, um, it, I, I don't think the quality really matters that much. That's why I'm using my phone. And the second reason is because I thought it was like an important story because it's been, I've never really done um, like a laid back chill video like this. And I've never really talked about like deep things with you guys. So I'm gonna try to put like the least amount of cuts so that it really feels like I'm telling you guys these stories. And this is a chair right here. Um, it's like, again, like really, really raw. Um, and yeah. Um, while I'm telling the story, I really want to like do my makeup. It's not a tutorial, but I just want to do my makeup because I love doing my makeup. And I feel like it's a little bit awkward if I just talk the whole video because I'm not really good at that. But if I do my makeup at the same time, I'll just feel better myself. But yeah, um, right now I'm alone. My best friend is at the gym. I'm at her house. So I'm just taking this time to film this video. Before I start, let me just get my beauty blender wet. <laughs> let me just get my beauty blender wet. And I'll be right back. Basically, the story started when I was in fifth grade, so almost five years ago. It really doesn't seem like that long ago, but that is long, long ago. I don't know. I feel like I was 12 years old or 11. I think I was 11 when it happened. Yeah, I was definitely 11 when it happened. Um, and basically, what I had was a cellular lymphoma. How it happened was I just was going to school one day. I remember it was September. Um, I was in fifth grade, so I was going to go to school and I was so 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 ready to go You know because back then I kind of enjoyed going to school don't know what I was thinking and there was like a red spot right here Like let me just do it with concealer like right here a red spot like just started seeking out <laughs> and At first I was like, oh my gosh, that's my first pimple. I was so excited. I was so happy I don't know why but like it was a sign that I was growing up I guess and I was like so happy like oh my gosh my first pimple like I can't believe it and my older sister she was like but that's not a pimple like just stop it's probably just a red mark and stuff and I was like mm, okay whatever um but then the days passed and passed and instead of the red mark going away it just stayed there and got bigger and it's not it wasn't I don't know how to explain it like it wasn't a bump like a pimple or I don't know like a bite like I don't know how to explain it it was just my skin was red like in just one spot that's why I thought it was a pimple at first but it wasn't because it didn't have like any pus or anything so um after like a week or so it just kept getting bigger and bigger and it didn't fade away so I was like okay mom this is really weird can we just go to the hospital because it's like not leaving and I just want to go see a dermatologist to see what's going on and I went to the dermatologist. Little did I know that was just the beginning of a year long journey for me. And I went to the dermatologist and the doctor said that it was, he just saw it and said it was a cell lymphoma. And he said that I should just put this cream on and it would leave after a week. And I was like, okay, yeah, that's easy. Yay, like just a week, I can do that. And so we put on that cream every single day for a week, just like the doctor said. After two weeks, it was still was there, was even getting bigger, and um, I was starting to get a little bit scared, if you really want me to be honest. I just, I didn't know what was up, like I had no clue what was going on. Take in mind, I was only 11 years old, and for a little girl, like I don't know, it was, um, it was really hard for me, because it was getting bigger and bigger, like I said, and students in my class were making fun of me. After a while, my parents were not worried because like we still didn't really know what it was. They were just like, oh, that's just weird that it's not leaving. But um, after, I feel like a month, we went to the dermatologist again 
and the dermatologist said they would do a biopsy on my little red mark and so they did a biopsy and um it hurt like ass like they had to inject a needle like for anesthesia um which that's always the part that hurts the most but they had to do that and it hurt so so much just to see if it was like what was going on what tissue was if it was like a cancerous cells or something and i got like two stitches to like stitch back up my skin because that biopsy if you guys don't know take it takes like a small sample of your skin of your like your tissue so they have to put stitches to like stitch back up your skin and that was when the like real bullying if you can say started because I just went to school with a patch on like a patch on my face and you could just see the blood like clustering in behind the patch and especially kids like like boys made so much fun of me like they were like ew that's so nasty like what the fuck like what what is that and all these things and i was only 11 years old i was a girl confused at what was going on with my face it made me feel really bad like it made me feel really self-conscious that year my confidence dropped so so much like before i was like really really like um social and like i was not shy at all like i really didn't care um, but after that, I just started to become so, so shy. Like, it was unreal. So, the biopsy said that, again, it was a cellular lymphoma. I came out positive, like, as a cellular lymphoma. But um, the good news was that it wasn't, like, cancerous cells. But the bad thing was that they could turn into cancerous cells. Like, they had this problem that they would turn into cancerous cells if something wasn't done. For the months and months that happened i was just looking at so many doctors just visiting the doctor's office so so often like i remember i would skip so many days of school especially the mornings because that's when doctors like to see you for some reason i don't know but um i was skipping so much school i was getting really behind and i remember um something that struck me i don't know if it's that, that big of a deal but i was taking a spanish quiz and I remember there was a part in the back, like a whole part in the back, that I had no clue what it was. And, <clears throat> whoa. And I was just lost because I lost like so many days. And she like took all the points off. And I went to her and I was like, ma'am, I wasn't here. You don't know how hard this is being for me. Like, please don't take points off for me not being here because I'm, I went to the doctor's office. Like, it's not really my fault. And she was really kind enough to um, not count those points. Because, you know, when you're in fifth grade, you don't have to catch up. Like, at least in my school, you don't have to worry, like, oh my gosh, what work did I miss? Like, if you, were, if you had an excused absence, it really didn't matter. If you missed any work, you didn't have to do it. So that was the case with me, and she was kind enough to not count it. The first dermatologist that I went to, he was, like, giving me, like, weird things and stuff. And nothing, nothing was working. So, I ended up going to another dermatologist. And this is the second time they did a biopsy on my face. And, again, they had to open up my tissue, take a sample, send it to the States, um, and do, like, these tests. And then sew my face back up for the second time. And I would have to repeat the whole process of going to school and people laughing at me because I had like a drying blood on the patch. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? I don't know. But um, it was like really embarrassing, really hard for me. And at that time, I also went to ballet. When I was in ballet, so many girls asked me, did a bee bite you or something? And I know that they weren't saying like in a mean way because they had no true way of knowing other than people in my class and my family you really had no way of knowing like what was on my face and i remember like at times getting angry even though they had no way of knowing i just got angry because people were just asking me all the time it was really embarrassing for me having to repeat the same thing to everyone because i was like it's a cellular lymphoma and they were like what is that and i had to explain sometimes i didn't even bother to explain because i was just tired of it after winter is when things got more intense um i was not only visiting dermatologists but i was visiting um i don't know how you call it the doctors that are like specialists in cancer i was visiting so many of those doctors i was visiting plastic surgeons to see if there was a way i could just remove this and i remember going to a plastic surgeon um and him saying that if they were to remove this red dot from my face they would have to like um start from here i don't know why but they would just have to do that carve from here like make a cut here and then like scoop it out and he said that 
my face was too beautiful for him to do that that there had to be another way to remove it than to literally cut my face open and so then i went to a radio therapist something like that um that gave like gave like radiotherapy or something like that and they said they would start doing sessions of radiotherapy to me and my dad at that time he and now he's still like a health freak and if you guys didn't know like chemotherapy and radiotherapy and all of those things that has like waves isn't good for you like yeah it it wants to find out something good but the whole process of it isn't good for you and so they wanted to do that to me and my dad was like kind of skeptical about it and i was scared i would go to the cancer department because that's where the doctors were and i would just see like bald people and i was 12 then and that was just a scary um thought for me that being bald might be my reality like it was really really scary for me after that a few months later i don't know this like perfect from memory like if you would have told me to tell you this story like three years ago i would have remembered many more details but if I would tell you the details, it would this would be like an hour long video. My doctors were starting to say that I would probably have to go to the states to get like treatment and all of those things, and um, which is something just scary to tell me. And at the moment, at the time when I had like this thing on my face, I didn't know, but my parents did know. They didn't tell me because they didn't they didn't want to make me feel scared. The doctors were already talking about like injecting. A huge needle into my spinal cord that would remove bone marrow to see if they could make any more tests that are much more thorough and like much more intense um, but for that they would have to like stick a huge needle into my bone like literally my spinal cord to get bone marrow and they were already talking about how I was possibly gonna get cancer that it was a very large possibility I had like a one like less than a 1% out of the 100 chance of the red mark just leaving on its own. Like if it wanted to leave, it would leave like a 0 0.5 in 100, which is obviously really low and it just basically gave me no hope. My parents at that time, they were really, really, really worried for me. Like they were so worried. You don't even know. They told me this after like I got rid of this because thankfully I don't have it anymore, but um, they told me afterwards because they didn't want to like scare me while I had it like something was just wrong in the way my cells were reproducing They were again. They weren't cancerous cells, but it was just something in my immune system That wasn't working like it should have been um, but basically what happened is one day um, just out of nowhere my dad um, just prayed for me um, and he said, God, if you want to, like, just heal my daughter. Because obviously he was discouraged. Like, I, I was really bad. And um, my dad told me that ever since he did pray that day, my red spot just started fading away. Oh, and I forgot. Like, before it starting to fade, um, they did a third biopsy on my face. A third freaking biopsy on the same spot on my face. Recutting the same wound up and restitching it back up. So basically, it just left my face like fucked up right here um and if you're really close you can see how it's textured like i have no idea if you can see that but it's like textured there because it like totally like fucked up my skin like imagine opening the same wound three times so yeah but then after that my wound just started to disappear like it literally just started fading away because it wanted to it freaking wanted to but um for like a good year i would say a good solid year you could still see like a little bit of a hint of red to like speed up the process what they did to me was they took me to the second dermatologist that i went to and she's more of like an esthetician they lasered my skin so that it would basically burn off and a layer of skin would renew and so it would just make the pigmentation of the redness and the color leave quicker and after like five sessions of laser um it was um it was practically gone i do know that lots of guys especially like i said were really really harsh to me and those in that year i can't really blame them they were just kids but i feel like no matter what age you are you really have to be careful with how you treat people you have no clue what they're going through you don't know them even if you go to the same school or same class, you don't know the struggles that they're going through. So why even op like give your opinion on a young girl who is obviously going through something rough? Like that's just something that I've never understood. But after those like four or five laser sh sessions, um, it almost faded completely. Like it made it so much better. 
but what really made it fade like 100% was time. Um, my skin just needed time to heal after those three biopsies, to heal after those four to five laser sessions. And it is still basically affecting me because although physically this is gone, also physically but like inside me, my cells still have like a fault in them. And it doesn't mean that I am like in living fear of, you know, getting cancer and all of these things, but it doesn't mean that I I can eat whatever the heck I want, whenever I want. Like, I can, but it's not recommended because um, obviously the healthier you eat, the better it is for your body. And my body on its own already was struggling. So if I eat healthier, it'll just help it out. I hope that you guys at least enjoyed um, a more laid back video like this where it was just me talking the whole time and me doing my makeup, but that's because that helps me talk. Um, and yeah, I just, I guess I just wanna say that like a message or the moral is two things. One is you can't take anything for granted because I mean, it can happen to anyone. Um, like right now, my skin looks like here, it looks fine, but you never know what can happen. You never know, um, what's gonna happen to you to one of your family members you never know and i could have gotten cancer perfectly easy if i wasn't in that 0.5 percent and maybe would have even have to cut through my face and like to remove it which would have been awful and also valuing and respecting people around you because there might be someone that's going through something like me maybe it's not exactly what's going on in my face but Everyone has their own struggles, everyone has their own secrets, and it's not up to you to um, laugh about it, to comment on it, unless they ask for your comment. Like, it's really not your place. And I really wanna say that, especially for when you're teenagers, when you're kids, it's like not cool if you comment on something and no one asks you, because probably that person is struggling on its own and adding someone else's comment to it is just gonna make things worse like if you're not gonna say something positive or something that's encouraging then don't open your mouth um at least that's something that i wish people would have done when i was going through that struggle i really hope this video wasn't too long i said i wasn't gonna edit but so far i feel like i've recorded like 25 minutes worth of video and i'm really gonna try to shorten that down as much as i can without making the video too edited i don't know but that was it for today. I promise next week will be a better quality video because I did pre-film a video before I lost my camera charger. So you will have a makeup video with good quality and hopefully after I upload that video, I will already have my camera charger so that I can upload better videos. That was it for today and I will see you guys in my next video. Love you. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> Thank you guys for 2,000 subscribers. That's amazing. Um, it seriously means a lot, like, thank you for subscribing. Love you guys!